Okay, I'm here with Bruce of Kip Arrow and we're gonna go over how this gnome engine actually works. So this is a reproduction gnome rotary engine about 90 to 100 horsepower. And the thing about a rotary is you just saw, you rotate the prop, you rotate the entire engine. The crankshaft is bolted to the airframe. This engine has no throttle. It is governed by the size of that propeller. So it just runs wide open and we'll get into the ignition system that allows you to per throttle it per se with a kill switch or a, a blip switch, right? Okay, so let's see how this thing works. We start, basically the basic concept is the fuel runs through the hollow crankshaft into the case of the engine in an extra rich state with yeah. air, right? Too rich to burn in the crankshaft. Too rich to burn and it gets slung out or... It gets drawn into the cylinders. Drawn into the cylinders as the cylinders, as the pistons make their uh, motion through the cylinders. There's only one valve per cylinder. This one valve works as both the intake and exhaust. Um, by the way, this is a four cycle engine, not a two cycle engine. Here's the spark plug, a single spark uh, ignition. And so the um, piston moves up and down and the air, fuel air moisture is drawn in through a couple of ports back here in the cylinder. There's, there's a row of ports in the bottom of the cylinder. Yep, row of ports in the bottom of the cylinder that brings the fuel air mixture into the cylinder and then it get, comes up on the compression stroke and fires. And then it, after the uh, compression stroke, you get the exhaust stroke and that exhaust comes right out of here. So you get, so this works as intake and exhaust to yes. draw some air in, <clears throat> as well as the air that's inside the uh, crankcase as well. So <laughs> now we got to time these valves with the camshaft. And if you look at this alignment here, we got seven cylinders here, right? Nine, nine, nine cylinders. Nine cylinders, there's nine cams. Nine different cams, an individual cam for each individual cylinder or um, rocker arm located inside of here. And of course, there's a total loss oil system using castor oil. That's why it smells like a model airplane out here all the time. And that castor oil is slinging out through the exhaust and the rings and everything else. Also, these, since there's an orifice here, yeah. since this is spinning, uh, the centrifugal force will draw the oil down the push rod, hits here, lubricates this. There's a groove in the back of this rocker arm. So the castor oil ends up in that groove. There's a hole for the groove to there to lubricate that. So this, yeah, total loss oil system right on down through here. And then it flings it out. Flings it out and all over you. That's why you got to have the scarf to keep that from getting into your face too much. There's your ignition system right there. It normally uses a magneto style ignition, but you got a, uh, you're using a 12 volt ignition on this one? We've got an electronic ignition. <laughs> electronic ignition. Now, in order to throttle this thing, if you want, um, if when you start it, it's gonna go wide open. Yes, uh, there's and no throttle. There's no throttle. They do have this a mixture control mixture here. mixture control, yes. And you've got a blip switch or ignition switch Blip switch is here in the yoke. Okay, and all that does is interrupts the ignition. Ignition. It doesn't stop the fuel and oil, it just shuts off the ignition. So fuel and oil is still pouring all over the place and when you uncork that thing, it could go. So be ready for an in-flight fire at any moment. Um, but you also got a way of th with running the, half ignition. With the electronic ignition, we can go to half ignition. All right. Instead of firing every other cylinder, it fires every fourth cylinder. Ah, huh, okay. And then we've got a wind-driven generator running a, a pump. An air pump. An air pump. So to get the fuel into the system, oh, that's we have right. a hand pump that we pump up pressure. We can see what the pressure is here uh, to get it started. When you're flying, you don't want to sit there and be pumping every couple minutes. It's a Rotherham air pump. It'll spin with the forward motion and the prop blast to provide air to pressurize the fuel tank. So like a model airplane, you're gonna pressurize this fuel tank, right? Do I got, oh, I'm looking down this here. Fuel, fuel tank. tank, that's oil, that's castor oil up there. To pressurize this fuel tank to help feed that fuel tank into the crankcase of the engine and yes. get it spread out correctly. Good, and then what do we got going here? That is the primer pump for the oil. To prime the- Before we start, this is spring-loaded closed. I'll pull it out, let it fill with oil, let it go, and it will 
prime the oil system. Do that twice so everything's pre-oiled before you start. Spin the engine around twice to lubricate, um, distribute that oil, lubricate stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got to prime the fuel. Then we'll prime the fuel. Uh, I'll have it pumped up. Push this up for about a five count. We have the engine parked with an open cylinder. The valve is open on the very bottom. You'll be able to see fuel, a few drops of fuel come out of that. Pull it back to cut off. Uh, spin the prop around a couple more times to distribute the fuel. Yeah. Set it up where you need it on compression to start it, hand prop it. Uh, I'll turn all, all three switches on. This and uh, he'll pull the prop through. As soon as it starts to catch, I'll bring this up and I'll make minor adjustments to get it to run tachometer. I want it to run about 1100 RPM or so. And that's wide open, 11, is 1100 RPM? Well, 11, 1125, 1150, depends on the temperature, humidity, uh -huh. Static. things are going. And in the air, you could that would increase You'll get too. a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, but you don't want to overspeed these no. things either because that's a lot of centripetal force. And as far as torque goes on the, uh, on the airplane flying these things, Folks that actually operate them say the torque is not as big as people it's think. not what people think. There's several myths. One is that the pilots would land and they'd have to run to the bathroom because there's castor oil. Yeah. Well, how do they get the castor oil into their stomach? Yeah. That's, that's a myth. Yeah. That don't happen. The other one you alluded to was the silk scarf. Uh-huh. World War I uniforms were usually wool. They were buttoned up tight. So you're doing this, looking yes. for the bad guy, yeah. which side you're on. Your neck is chafed to death. Uh -huh. A silk scarf is kind of self-lubricating. Yeah. So you don't chafe your neck to death. Yes. So you Good. don't really need it to wipe your goggles. You've got a towel around it. You've got a windshield to deflect it. So that's... That's more mythology, and the yeah. torque is not nearly so bad. Yes. But the in-flight fires and engine failures, <laughs> that's a reality. <laughs> So that's, and the main reason they wanted to create this as a rotary engine was to, well, get the light, the most horsepower out of a light design and provide air, adequate air cooling to the cylinders. Yes. And it also is a giant flywheel. So it runs very smooth. Yes. Smooth by antique standards. No, really smooth. Really smooth, yeah. really smooth. Yeah, you, you've got a 220 pound flywheel up here. Yeah. Spinning plus yeah. the prop, so it really runs smooth. Yeah, there you go. So the advantages of a gnome rotary engine. Thanks, Bruce, for the tour. Anytime. They're going to fire up the gnome rotary engine, 100 horsepower. Prime the castor oil, see how the entire engine spins. The crankshaft is what's mounted to the airplane. That's why it's called a rotary engine. We'll give you a detailed breakdown after we run it here of how this thing operates. Now he's got to prime the fuel. So it's, of course, it's a total loss oil system using the castor oil. And it's a single valve for each cylinder that does both intake and exhaust. Fuel's off. Fuel's off. It's off. Now I'm priming the fuel. He's going to prime the fuel in the cylinders. The fuel comes in through the crankshaft and is ported into the cylinders, similar to a model engine.
Yeah! Excellent! How, how, can a, how can a guy... The gnome rotary, the gnome rotary engine. Let's go get a detailed overview of how this thing works.